Last October, the Minecraft community had three choices to pick between for a new Minecraft mob. Despite that, greater than 50% of players picked the alley in the first round, and so here we have it in March of 2022, the first beta has come out that includes this guy. As you can see, now he is physically in the game, we have answers to questions like exactly how does he work, how do you befriend him, and more importantly, where does he spawn in the world, and I have very interesting answers to that because not only can they spawn here in the pillager outpost, but they also also have another very unique spawn place, but here's the best bit. This beta isn't just limited to the LA, although that's a very interesting thing by itself, but this is also a sign that Minecraft is taking a huge step forward because they have overhauled their control system in a way that is going to revolutionize what features can come to Minecraft in the future. But for now, let's get the cute guy out there and let's show you how he works. Because let's say we have some Bertrand planks on the ground and we give our little friend here a Bertrand plank. Do you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna be really helpful. We might need to Give him more space, actually. You know what he's going to do? He's going to be nice and helpful, and he's going to pick up my planks, and he's going to deliver them right to me. This is one of Minecraft's most helpful mobs, and I think it's kind of fun that after a long time of voting for hostile mobs that make our game worse, we finally have a mob that does nothing but help you out. But here's the even better thing. Not only can you basically tame the alley by basically making him follow you. By the way, this is a Minecraft Bedrock preview. My skin doesn't work, so I have to be Big the Cat. I don't know why Big the Cat works, but the Ocelot doesn't, but we're here anyway. Anyway, but as you can see, you can make the alley follow you around by giving him a block because he loves to be helpful But you can also make sure that he deposits at a particular block in the world Just by placing down a note block when you play a note block anywhere near him You can see there's this fun little new animation We have that reminds me of the skulk sensor honestly But this little noise sensor will tell the alley This is his new favorite block and so now when we place our birchwood planks on the ground for him to collect He's gonna pick them up and he's gonna take them to his favorite birch <laughs> To his favorite note block and I love that he, he he got it wrong and he's gonna try again and he got it wrong this time as well so he's gonna have to keep on trying until he finally gets it right you know what he's being very fun right now i like <laughs> okay he did it he got two blocks on there I guess he doesn't care. He's just going to keep throwing them around, which is incredibly fun in my opinion. So there are a lot of known bugs with the LA. Oh wait, I think he nailed it that time, right? Nope, okay, he, do he doesn't care. He just, he just likes throwing blocks around at this point. <laughs> so my first three questions were as such. The first one is, can you breed LAs? Sadly, it seems the answer is no. The second question was, how many blocks can they actually handle? Can they handle an entire stack all at once, for example? And it seems as though, at least my half stack, uh, oh, the answer seems to be true, although there is obviously a certain capacity they can actually throw it and get rid of it. I mean, he's having a little bit of a hard time right now. Um, and so I wanted to know how many blocks we could get in there. And I also wanted to know where they spawned. So let's go through those three questions in order. First things first, like I said, they cannot breed as best I have learned at time of recording. This might be something to add in the future. Uh, second things though, is if we place a ton of blocks, is there a limit to their capacity? It seems as though the answer is at least somewhat yes. But again, they can kind of solve that by doing lots of round trips. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it seems as though there is a lot of round trips needed to carry several stacks. So yeah, there is a limit to how useful this will be in the end, except you could just get more LAs, except you can't breed them, right? So what can you do? And the answer is you can find them in the wild. This is, in my opinion, one of the best reasons to explore in Minecraft. Again, maybe in the actual game it turns out not to be so fun, because the only way to find alleys right now, and presumably in the future, is to go to two very underloved structures. One of these I'm sure you saw earlier in the video. If you didn't, you might want to get an eyesight check, but I'm sure you saw that you can find them in the uh, pillager outposts. One of the new cage types, we don't just have empty cages and iron golem cages now, we also have these alley cages. So, alleys will spawn caged up here, because you know what pillagers hate they're just such mean guys and what they hate as a result is useful mobs so they cage them up the two most useful mobs in minecraft in fact the iron golem who's maybe not so useful for his defending and more useful for his iron uh, capabilities but still the two most useful mobs are now trapped over here and you have to go save them also you know what the hay golem also trapped it's such a tragedy right why why don't we have these guys functioning and the second place you find them is so interesting because I'm so glad they finally gave a use to the Woodland Mansion. That's right, this structure, which has been rendered more or less useless or not that useful by 
the uh, you know the changes they made by bringing in the raids and stuff. Um, it now has a function again because locked inside some of the prisons, the prisons that previously remained empty, we now have the alleys. There are apparently other places they can spawn, but still, I love this. This is such a great way. Can we put no blocks in their hands? You can. Uh, this is such a great way to repurpose an otherwise near useful, uh, useless structure because now we have alley prisons, which is just the most adorable thing. If you come here, you can get your hands on a bunch of these guys. And so, yeah, if you want to get a ton of alleys, you come to the Woodland Mansion. I think this is such a beautiful way to take a objectively useful mob that people are going to at least want to play around with, with a reason to explore the world without having to make the current rare things pointless. I think this has made the uh, Woodland Mansion even more explorable, and it's really fun and a revolution to Minecraft, but it's not the only thing they've done this update, because they changed the way the touch UI works in some big ways that I, would, I need to talk about. But first, they're also making some big commitments to parity, which I love that they've, uh, by the way, look at this, I've got, got my own little, little, little alley following me around. It's so cute. One of the one of the best helper mobs. I do have to admit, I was non-alley voter, but I am happy to see democracy in action working out. And I'm also happy to see bedrock parity changes making their way over here because some of these are truly revolutionary. One of them that sounds like nothing is random tick positions will no longer be chosen below the world. One of the weird problems Minecraft had was it was randomly choosing tick positions for things that did not exist about half of the time, meaning pretty much every crop on the bedrock version of the game takes double as long to grow. This means that they've now changed all of those growth rates to match the job edition, and they can finally have a world where things grow at the rate they're meant to, because if you've played both versions, you'll notice it's arbitrarily slower on bedrock. It was not intentional, it was the weirdest bug they finally got around to fixing. They've also gone around to making it so that a mob picking up an item can be seen slightly pulling it towards it uh, as it picks up. This matches the behavior of Java. Also, the blaze fireball now deals an impact. Acacia leaves will now grow leaves on every branch below Y0. Okay, that's so weird. Weird. I need to see what that bug actually was. Huh, that is kind of weird. It's not only weird, by the way, but it makes me question how anyone even found this bug in the first place. Like, one of the branches will always not generate with leaves. It's, it's strange. And I, you know what? Good job, Minecraft bug fixers. And better job, Minecraft, for fixing it, I guess. <laughs> oh, isn't this adorable? Okay, back to what I was saying. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love this. If you say you don't love this, you're lying. Anyway, they've also made a bunch of other important things that aren't really parity, but are basically just 1.19. Improving Skulk and the Skulk Catalyst and the Darkness Effect. They even explicitly said, please note, the Warden hasn't made its way into the game yet, but it's getting ready for its big debut, implying we're going to see that soon. I'm very excited. But the most important things on the changelog besides all of that is probably the fact that Shulkers will now be able to duplicate on the Bedrock version of the game. When a Shulker hits another Shulker, as a chance of spawning another Shulker, which is a weird mechanic, but it is the way it's meant to work. Just a fun reminder, this means that bedrock uh, shulkers will be better than the java ones because you can die the shulkers themselves. No, not the shulker boxes. You can die the shulkers as they even show in their promotional image. One of the weird and fun features of Minecraft bedrock in my opinion. Speaking of weird and fun features, the biggest one is a change to the touch controls. So this is technically a preview of the new touch control scheme for players on mobile devices. So if you're playing on touch screen, you're probably used to something that looks like this right now. The kind of, uh, you know, D-pad on the left and the, the crouch and the jumping in. It's it's basic, it's pretty basic and it works kind of well. I feel as though people have gotten really well used to this. However, Minecraft has needed to outgrow this for some time now. And when you compare Minecraft to say Fortnite, or I learned that Apex Legends could be played in a tablet just yesterday. And as I looked at it, I really had to question how do all of those, you know, different buttons fit on screen? And the answer is they didn't make compromises to the gameplay for the control scheme. Instead, they made, maybe you could argue a compromise to the control scheme. Some would argue they didn't. And so Minecraft Minecraft has basically been compromising as far as Minecraft Bedrock and to a lesser extent Minecraft as a franchise because of how the controls do work. Have you noticed how on Bedrock you have to crouch to use a shield? This is because you can't use two functions at the same time because there's just one way to hit things which makes it really hard to work out how to feed animals or anything like that. There's like a feed button that pops up and Minecraft has figured rather than making all of those compromises, why not just use a control scheme like one that looks like this. This is the image they used themselves with five separate buttons. There is up 
down, attack, there is interact, and then there is a fifth one right there that is kind of hard to see. But you can see that now instead of having one button for the right half of your screen, you can jump, you can crouch, you can attack something, let's say you've got a bee in front of you, or you can interact with it. In this case, you can feed the horrific Minecraft bee that is oversized and we don't bring enough attention to, and uh, we can then also uh, do a fifth action at the same time, which sadly I can't tell you because it's just an image, but what we can do is look at some actual gameplay of the new control scheme, and while we show you this, allow me to explain why this is a big deal for everyone, not just touchscreen players. You might be saying, I really don't care what those phone people are doing, you know, I don't hate them, but also it doesn't affect me playing on my keyboard, mouse, or controller, but it does, and not just in the indirect way, where things like shields work slightly different on Bedrock to Java, but also in the future of Minecraft way for everyone. The bundle was added to Minecraft Java, it was fully functional, um, and then they decided to remove it from the game before ever adding it to Bedrock. We can only speculate based on what they said about having issues getting it to work for all devices, uh, but it is heavily implied that making a bundle work on a touchscreen phone was just something that was very hard for them to do, and given that touchscreen players are the majority of Minecraft players, why would you make a feature that doesn't work for them in any usable way? And so this new UI and this new attitude towards Minecraft on phones and tablets could be a serious shift into making things more accessible and usable, and uh, into making the game play better on mobile devices, maybe even. But even if you don't care about that, this is a serious improvement for the future of Minecraft. I cannot understate how much I think this is a revolutionary moment of Minecraft finally unfreeing one of the big shackles on what they can kind of do with the future of the game, and I think it's a very, very big deal. I do want to also play devil's advocate here and say that, well, just like every other big revolutionary feature idea, like going to half yearly updates or every you know, couple monthly updates in some cases, or even the new UI, things like this can take a really long time. The new menu screens we still only have in the betas, and within the betas it's a separate subset of betas that can access the new menu screens, and they look kind of fun, but the fact that it's taken years just to get there um, tells you how like either data driven or how bogged down things are getting, where they need to prove things in a way that you wouldn't for uh, Minecraft many many years ago. And so in reality, will this affect 1.19 itself? Probably not. 1.20 though, will we be able to finally see things like uh, the bundles? Will we be able to see the new combat hitting, uh, you know, the bedrock devices? I really hope so. In fact, I would go as far as to say, based on the combat murmurings we've seen, these might all be linked together. Now that there's a whole group of people taking on the combat update, that's a change that was announced recently, we're gonna finally get into this new world uh, where we can actually touch the Minecraft combat without either upsetting the super hardcore people on the one end or the super, you know, casual uh, Minecraft bedrock players on the other end. And, you know, just now's a fun time to remind you that we're talking about touchscreen players as being the majority of Minecraft bedrock players and the majority of Minecraft players. Players. I still think it's funny that Minecraft, uh, you know, th this same version of the game that has people playing on their, <laughs> literally touching, touching their phones like this. Also, yeah, my phone is cracked. I'm sorry, but like people touching their phones and trying to play Minecraft like that have to deal with the harder wither, etc., etc., etc. And it's kind of relevant when we say the warden is coming pretty soon. Maybe even next week. We had some murmurings that maybe uh, some big snapshots will be happening soon, and so maybe that includes the warden coming to Bedrock. I don't know for sure. I think we've reached the end of. Uh, information town. We're starting to get into the speculation zone, which is a great place to be, uh, but we'll have to save that for another time. For now, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you did all enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. I'm just kidding. What, what you can do if you like this video is come check out our stream, and also uh, just know there's a fun piece of Toy Cat merch in the works uh, that is coming relatively soon, and uh, yeah, I wanted to like give you a little pre-announcement right now. But for now, just be happy, the roulette wheel of what is added and what isn't added to Minecraft Bedrock is finally over, and also be happy that, I don't know, don't be happy that it's, don't be sad that it's over, be happy that we've started a brand new stream series soon. I, I'm gonna try and survive on a flat-only world. As you've seen from this video, I can record and stream the Minecraft preview, which means we can try in the super flat survival to do as much as we humanly can. It's gonna be so much fun, and I look forward to seeing you there tomorrow. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's tomorrow. I might I might die in a house fire before then, because I'm not subscribed to my own channel, which did you know greater than 99% of house fires happen to non-subscribers. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Tomorrow. Come, come join.